Um, hope is back in the hearts of Hawks fans around the world, um, but there's no time to sit pretty. And so we're going to do the standard format for a Hawk Talk today. We're going to talk about what was good about the last game, what I'd like to see be improved, I think what we'd all like to see be improved, and then a little preview for our big, big game, Monday Night Football, in front of the whole world against Green Bay. So a few years back, to take it, to put this in perspective, 2007, 2008, it seemed like the Seahawks, I mean, besides being a terrible team, had a reputation for being a, and this was acknowledged by our coach at the time, Jim Mora, that we had a reputation for being a team that you could, any team could just walk in, punch us in the nose, and we wouldn't hit back. We were soft. And at the time, our coach, Jim Mora, said, I want players that are dirt bags. I want nail eaters. I want guys that are going to grind other teams into the ground. And it wasn't with Jim Mora. Jim Mora got fired. But our new coach, Pete Carroll, came in and tried to do just that. We wanted, he wanted to make a team full of dirt bags. And I couldn't say anything uh, <clears throat> about Sunday's game that didn't reflect that we were a bunch of dirtbags out there against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I think we've, I, we achieved it at least for one day. Like, can we do it for a full season? I don't know. But these players grinded that Dallas Cowboys finesse team into the ground, starting with open field tackling. You know, little screen, little swing passes out to the, out to the flat. Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellors, our two safeties, strong and free safeties, were an annihilating guys, like honed missiles uh, with laser, laser vision on them. Those guys were plowing over, and big guys, DeMarco Murray, I mean, we took the Cowboys out of their, out of their element with just great open field tackling, and that is something we didn't see a few years ago. We manhandled their receivers. Uh, a lot of credit is deserved to Richard Sherman and... Brandon Browner, um, those guys really took the Cowboys receivers out of their out of their kind of comfort zone. Miles Austin, uh, Des Bryant, especially with tons of drops, and then of course you got to mention Jason Witten, who had several drops in the game. Um, when he is a, a safety that is known to have almost no drops in a whole season, um, I think they got in his head a little bit, um, just hitting them. Smacking them around, pressing them. Um, Jason Witten took a big shot to the back. This is the Cowboys tight end. Took a big shot to the back um, from Cam Chancellor. And it, you could tell that Witten wanted no part of Cam Chancellor all day long. I mean, playing with the lacerated spleen, the last thing he wanted was, you know, bam, bam, Cam Chancellor to tear him up a liver or something. Um, so I led, that led to a lot of drops, and I think that was because, A, we were physical with them, but B, man, we just got in their head. Our offensive line just wore the Dallas' defensive line um, into the ground on Sunday, especially in the second half. Um, we just ran and ran and ran the ball. Nine, you know, a 90-yard drive and then an 88-yard drive to kind of cap the game off and put the nail in the coffin. Um, Marshawn Lynch had a lot to do with that. I mean, you talk about a dirt bag. The guy is a beast. We call him beast mode for a reason. Um, but our offensive line was great, uh, even with some injuries, even with some inconsistencies, um, you know, struggles. For example, J.R. Sweezy, we talk about him every week. Everybody stepped up, and they, and they ground Dallas' D-line in, into the floor. Our defensive line took the run away from the Cowboys right in the beginning of the game. I said last week, DeMarco Murray is a great Great running back, young guy. He never got in a rhythm because of our guys in the middle. Um, Brandon Meebane, Red Bryant. Those guys were just plugging the run all day long. And it had, you know, it had to, they had to switch to the pass very early. And like I said before, with, with our defensive backs throwing off their, their passing lanes and then they're not being able to run, they were screwed. Um, Big blocks on offense. You got to talk about. Um, we'll get to Golden Tate's big hit on Sean Lee, but Robert Turbin really um, kind of decleated Demarcus Ware uh, on a pass play in 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 the game. And I I think it's very interesting that even our offensive players are feared. Our offensive players are putting guys on defensive guys on their butts when it's supposed to be the other way around. Um, Golden Tate's hit on Sean Lee, probably one of the greatest. Um, 
kind of crack back hits you'll see uh, all season. And unfortunately, the league, I'm not going to even get into it. You can watch ESPN if you want. They'll talk all, of, all day about the fines and the commissioner and what that means for football. Golden Tate got hit $21,000. Supposed to make $540,000 this season. It's like 1% of his salary. Keep doing that all day long, Golden. We love the identity that uh, it's providing. Uh, we want teams to be afraid of us on at all periods of the game. Uh, this is definitely the identity that Pete Carroll, our head coach, and our general manager, John Schneider, want for this team is to be someone that you can't come in here and mess with us, especially at home. CenturyLink Stadium, we will pound you into the ground, and it's going to be allowed, and you're going to go home with your tail wagging between your legs. And so that was a great game for us, um, and to see that identity sort of pushed. Um, another thing I was really proud about was Russell Wilson had time in the pocket, un um, unlike the Week 1 Arizona game. He had a lot of time back there, despite the injury to Russell Okung, which we didn't even foresee that him Russ missing Russell Okung missing that game, our left tackle, but he did. Um, a definite shout out to Frank Omayal, uh, who filled in valiantly. He was just great at our backup left tackle. He basically kept Demarcus Ware out of the backfield all day, and we were really scared of that last week. I mean, you can go back. I was shaking in my boots thinking about Demarcus Ware, and so it was great to see our offensive line um, give Russ some time. And he had a great game, 15 of 20, uh, threw for a touchdown. Uh, that touchdown strike was to Anthony McCoy, another shout-out, our um, newish tight end. Uh, he had a good game for us, a couple catches, 40-something yards. Uh, we don't need receivers to have big games, just spread the ball around. It seems to be uh, Russell Wilson's kind of signature style, spreading the ball around, so I'm happy with that. Um, and then beyond that, we dominated the time of possession in the second half, uh, and that was, you know, that that's what a good run game will do. They didn't. Cowboys hardly got even a chance to to get anything done, and that was because we just ran and ran and ran the ball, and the clock keeps running. All right, I want to get to the bad penalties in the red zone. We got it. This has been an issue for two weeks now. Penalties in the red zone are going to kill scoring drives, and they have so far. Um, False starts, delay of games. This is the second delay of um, second week in a row that Russell Wilson got a delay of game in the red zone. Not good. We need to eradicate these problems. False starts, uh, especially at home. No excuse. Get on the same page, guys. Uh, there was there was a couple there were a couple of drives on Sunday where it was like so promising, so promising, so promising, and then like three or four penalties in a row, and they kill scoring drives. It's not good. Um, I wasn't feeling that great going into the second half on Sunday because it seemed like for how well we were dominating on first and second down, they couldn't run at all. We would be putting the Cowboys at consistently at third and eight, third and nine, and they would keep they would keep moving the chains on big passing plays. And so I was very disappointed in that. Um, and it seemed like we kind of less, you know, we kind of decreased that in the second half. But got to get off the field on third down. Your defense, um, your defense has got to shut it down on third down, especially with the secondary as talented as ours. Richard Sherman, Brandon Browner, Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas. We gotta, we gotta swat down passes. We gotta get off the field. Um, extending drives like that is just is just poor play, and it's not the signature sign of a of a top ten defense. And so I'd like to see that it be improved this week. If we, especially if we want to beat who I'm getting to right now, the Green Bay Packers. Now, folks, this is a team that went 15-1 and last season. And the fact that we're even talking that maybe the Seahawks have a shot to win this game, yes, is, is, is a point to the fact that we're playing at home, but it's also a talk to how much we've improved this year. Um, but I want to talk about what Green Bay sort of brings to the table Monday night, and then I'll give you my score prediction, and then we're ready to rock, Hawks fans. And you got to root hard this weekend because you guys did a great job. Uh... On, on Sunday against the Cowboys, and I know you're going to do it this week. First thing about Green Bay I've noticed is they can sack like crazy, uh, especially with their with this guy, and you're going to hear this name all night Monday, Clay Matthews, their amazing linebacker. Um, he's already on pace to break the sack record. He hits quarterbacks like a violent lightning bolt. This kid is, is the real deal. 
and we're going to have to find a way to stop him on Sunday. Uh, on the other side of the ball, the Green Bay Packers give up a lot of sacks. So I want to see Chris Clemens and Bruce Irvin really ratchet it up on, on Monday and get in that backfield and tear his head off a little bit because Aaron Rodgers is an amazing quarterback, probably the best NFL offensive player in the league. Um, and so we're really, really going to need to bat him around a little bit. Um, Green Bay has a, uh, have some very feisty defensive backs that should probably give our wide receivers and Russell Wilson fits on Monday. Um, Charles Woodson, Tremont Williams, those guys are consummate pros, lots of interceptions, ball hawks, just really, really, really great players. And so I want to see our receivers, Golden Tate, Sidney Rice, even Braylon Edwards, I want to see us have, um, I want to see them have breakout days. I want to see, you know, I would like to see us get some good, good passing yards and get a couple receiving touchdowns. That would be incredible. Um, we have to stop the run game like we have been for the past two weeks. We shut down Ryan Williams in Arizona. We shut down DeMarco Murray. And now the next test is Cedric Benson. This is a guy that's been bumped, kind of bounced all around the league, but he's been looking pretty good for, for Green Bay, um, especially last week against Chicago. But we have to stop the run game, and we have to make Aaron Rodgers beat us, which make Aaron Rodgers beat you, that's like saying you have to make uh, hot dogs at a cookout, folks. I mean, it's, it's obvious. If you let Aaron Rodgers beat you, he will beat you. Um, he hasn't seemed like himself, in my opinion, the past two games. Uh, he hasn't been that amazing, all, uh, you know, just bowls you, bowls you over quarterback. So what we can't have is him coming to uh, CenturyLink Field on Monday Night Football and let it be Aaron Rodgers coming out party. I'm back, league. I'm going to destroy you guys and go undefeated for the rest of the season breaking the all, you know, yards record and touchdowns record. So, in that, I want to put the, the spotlight on a few of our, our our areas of our team and who are the guys that we need to step up to win. Our secondary, can they stop Rodgers? Can those guys that have, you know, been touted as this amazing unit, um, can they stop Rodgers? Can they confuse him? Can they be physical with those great wide receivers? Um, Greg Jennings, is he going to play for the Packers, their wide receiver? He's amazing. Jordy Nelson, he's amazing. Can we stop them? Can we slow Jermichael Finley, Green Bay's tight end? That, that will be absolutely key. Second, I'd like to, uh, after I give him congratulations, I'd like to also challenge our offensive line to get better this week. We got to keep Green Bay off of our quarterback, young star Russell Wilson. We need to keep him clean. Because this team in Green Bay can sack the quarterback, folks. And the last thing we need is another Arizona game in which there are six guys in the backfield on every other play. And Russell Wilson is scrambling like he's searching for a turkey on Thanksgiving. Um, I'd like to also put a spotlight on Russ. Better every week. Let's get better every week, bud. And I made the campaign last week. Don't panic, Hawks fans. If this kid looks like a rookie, it's because he is. He's, he's green, but we got to give him a chance. I think that this game is a, is a race to 24 in the, fit, in the fact that, first off, who's number 24 on our team? Marshawn Lynch, the beast. We're going to have to rely on him to at least go over 120 yards, which I think is doable against this Packers team because they, you know, I think they, we, can, we can bowl him over. I don't think they can stop the run. So we got to let Marshawn Lynch go to, go to the races, number 24, beast mode. And it also, whoever can score 24 first in this game is going to win it. And I'm going to project that the Hawks will do that and win 24 to 21. It'll be an amazing atmosphere in Century, Century Link, folks. Uh, Hawks fans, keep staying the course. We're one and one. I'm going to be here every week chatting with you. Um, please leave comments, questions. I'm, I'd be happy to make... Um, more videos if there's certain topics that need to be discussed. So feel free to um, share with friends, and I really appreciate it. Go Hawks. Uh, I'm so proud of this team, and I can't wait for Monday. So keep in touch, folks. Thank you.